Hi guys, Frankie V from Frozen Sand here once again with a well, much <laughs> more of a quick tip uh, working with Power Tools episode um, and uh, uh, until I get a half decent uh, splash screen going here. Uh, to state once again, this is our effort uh, through video blogs uh, to uh, make sure that our third party uh, map makers are uh, kept up to date as to uh, the going ons as to the conversion from uh, it takes three to Unreal Four as far as the game Urban Terry goes. So um, I'm working. Uh, I've been working on a material uh, that is uh, will be able to give um, our mappers as well as me the ability to uh, uh, move around, create uh, composite types of materials that uh, they're more or less used to and already available and been uh, around for years in uh, in Radiant through the use of brushes, but apply those same the same type of material. Um, features to a static map object so you're not constantly running back and forth uh, adjusting your UV mapping uh, in uh, in an application like 3ds Max or Blender so uh, wh while working on it I came across this little problem now it's not really so much of a problem to me but it certainly be a, a rather annoyance if you don't know what you're looking at so to me this uh, this is our good old uh, good old uh, age-old problem of Z buffer fighting meaning that uh, we have information that's sharing the same planar the same uh, co planar as uh, uh, other assets uh, that are applied to an object now the most common um, mm, mm, common problem well as as an issue this would be kind of like uh, you know running out of gas and all you have to do is look down and see that uh, your needles on empty to know that you know there's no point in looking under the hood kind of deal so once you recognize it for what it is then it's a lot it's it's a real simple matter of being able to deal with it now the thing about z buffering is it really is it's just one asset fighting for predominance over another and in this case, it could be uh, a texture, uh, uh, but most times it is um, two objects sharing the same space within a three-dimensional space, and one trying to fight over the other as to uh, as to preferred rendering. So, um, um, in this case, in Radiant, uh, a good example of this is in 3ds Max. You hit the spacebar, it locks the uh, object. If you hit hit spacebar in Radiant, it creates a copy. So, uh, <laughs> needless to say, I'm rather familiar with this little problem. So, uh, obviously, though, our scene, our, our scene here is not, um, is not, uh, 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 has uh, copies over to one another. We can just select and take a quick look in behind it. And we see that there's nothing in the, you know, we haven't created any kind of secondary copy. So, uh, still, it's a Z of a problem, and uh, this usually means if we ch double check, triple check to make sure that we don't have one object over the other, it's a predominance problem as to layering uh, materials uh, within uh, the, the Z buffer. Now, you can certainly Google this and learn a little bit more about it. Uh, to uh, uh, the once, the, the, the more you, the more you research this, the more it really does kind of make sense to how, uh, as a composite. A material is just a, simply a set of instructions that determines how materials will be laid out into the Z-Buffer prior to being rendered. So this doesn't just come out of the material and then boom, it gets rendered. It has to be assembled and rendered uh, uh, through things like draw calls and what have you uh, over top of, the, off, up top of the surface. And where things can, kind of interesting is you can have Z-Buffer fighting uh, uh, taking place within the Z-Buffer based on the material's uh, predominance. Uh, as to its uh, particular need uh, and use. So, uh, how I have this set up here uh, so far is instead uh, uh, instead of having to have uh, somebody have to well me in this case having to wire each of these uh, each of these tracks and each of these uh, um, uh, 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 channels up one at a time, I'm simply just dropping them in as a switch so I can turn them off and on. But the switch needs a val input value into it that uh, without it if we just disconnect the false for example we get an error so we need a value that in there so the value that we want to put in there would be a, a null value in other words saying this you know I want zero information to be in this case it, to metal uh, that uh, that uh, basically turns it on say versus roughness where a null value would be one and then we just channel that in and more or less more or less it turns it off and on it's not really off and it's not really on as the channel is still getting information so uh, uh, that creates the potential for uh, some form of Z buffer fighting directly based on the material or texture that you're applying to uh, the object in this case the uh, most probable pro the probable suspect is anything that conveys height information. Uh, in this case, uh, a normal map or uh, or a or a height map or what have you. 
that you want to uh, increase or decrease the uh, the value to the point that uh, the um, a zero value or or a value is equal and planar as to the uh, uh, another val uh, uh, texture map that you applied on top of it. So they're sitting on top of one another. So when it gets rendered, it causes uh, a it could cause a particular area to flicker, or it can cause the whole thing to flicker depending on on the uh, the, the range, let's say, of of uh, coverage of the material. So we're back to this problem here, and we're looking at our material, and what we can see here, what what is suspect is, of course, the normal mat map contains height information which we have forced it to 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 as an off state to zero 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 so this is obviously fighting with another value so if we just change this to one to one to one this now creates a value that gives it priority to anything that has say zero 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 as into order of how it's getting stacked up so if we apply this and uh, we're going to have to wait for this to compile, which is always fun to try to talk our way through it. Uh, did it actually get it? Nope. Here we go. So as that's being applied, we can then go back to our material here and see what's happening. It's uh, it's recompiling the shader. Do, 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 do. Uh, <laughs> so which uh, <coughs> we have to uh, kind of fill in the dead airspace here with uh, <laughs> some mindless chit chat of no, uh, no use. And uh, give it a second here, and ta-da, there you go. Okay, now if we move around, Z-buffer fighting is gone because we gave a height information, uh, a, a predominant uh, value, which pulls it up from the Z-buffer uh, uh, above whatever material is being drawn below it. So, ta-da, Z-buffer problem gone, fighting, and no more flickering. Okay, thought I'd point that out. As um, I'm getting into the final stages of getting this uh, this uh, uh, material, this te texture, uh, uh, Uber Uber mat uh, completed, uh, that I can put out to our to anybody. Well, basically anybody that wants to use it. Uh, uh, as I mentioned, I guess uh, this is uh, this is a same feature that's been available in Radiant for years of being able to move around UV map and scaling and what have you and positioning for over texturing uh, uh, as uh, as a, as a, let's say a needed feature right now, uh, uh, particularly now that I'm working on Casa, uh, taking uh, uh, different textures and trying to reapply them to uh, uh, to um, uh, clean up geometry. So uh, you're going to run into that problem once you start uh, throwing in uh, your texture materials in, in here, and you start noticing that hey, all of a sudden uh, you got this flickering going on, and uh, you don't have to you you know what the problem is now. Okay, I thought I'd put just throw that out as a quick one and uh, hopefully in a couple of days I can get this uh, guy out so you guys can start uh, actually doing some old school texturing.